Hi, this is Freddie Spencer coming to you after a very exciting 2018 Dutch TT at Assen. Now, the Assen circuit, I remember when I first went there in, in my first year of Grand Prix race with HRC, I, I could not wait to go to what everybody called the Cathedral of, of Motorcycle Grand Prix Racing. And one of the reasons it's called that is because it's it's was been on the on the calendar since the very beginning, and it's also a motorcycle dedicated circuit, and that is something very unique for us. It's very rare, of course, in today's uh, racing world, um, that most of them are multi-purpose. And so there's talk over the last uh, few weeks about bringing back a Dutch Grand Prix, Formula One Grand Prix, and possibly running it at the Assen circuit. Now that would be not something that I think most riders would be too excited about. In fact, some of them talked this weekend at, at the Dutch TP, at the Dutch TT, the, the GP guys, and I agree with them. One is that the changes that would more than likely have to be made would take away some of the personality uh, of the Assen circuit, and they've already taken away so much anyway, especially since when I raced there, it was much longer. It had a lot more of the yeses blending. There was a lot more of, of the positive camber or bank in, in most of the corners, which helped to negate some of the issues of the track being so narrow because it is public road. And if they also, more than likely, would have to move away, move the spectators farther away, which would affect the, the intimacy that is so cool at the Dutch circuit. I remember that first couple nights of the first weekend I was there, and, and there's 200,000 people around the circuit, and it was literally a buzz that you could just a murmur from the thousands and thousands of people. And again, because there is that intimacy there that is allowed and, and a lot easier because of the fact of, of the motorcycles having less corner speed. The spectators don't have to be quite as far away. The other thing is, as Jorge Lorenzo, Lorenzo pointed out, is the fact that because it's not a, 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 motor, a car circuit, there's not all the asphalt that you see in the runoff areas. And so you still get penalized if you make a mistake and run off the circuit. Again, which makes the track unique. So we'll have to kind of see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Maybe some positive thoughts uh, out there and we can, hopefully it won't happen and they can run a Dutch Formula One Grand Prix at Zandvoort or one of the other circuits that they have. So, talk a little bit about qualifying. One, Danny Petrosa. What a disappointment for him it's been over these last few races. The uncertainty of what his future is in store for him once since he's left Honda and now that Ori Lorenzo has taken his spot I think it's certainly worried him, and it's unsettled him more than anything else, I think. And also, he's not sure. He realizes probably for the first time that his career is pretty much, you know, he's at the end of it. Um, you may think it, but until it really kind of faces you. You know, it's one of the things that makes what we do, so or sports in general, but especially motorsports, especially motorcycle Grand Prix racing because you have to be so focused in the moment because you're working with a machine that its job is to work with you but also it can it can work against you and you can't afford to be distracted at all and and you can't be uh, any negative thoughts or uncertainty and and that's certainly something I think Danny has been uh, distracted by over the last two weeks hopefully uh, the announcement as they say is probably going to come through in Germany um, it looks like, and his future will be decided one way or the other. You know, I know he'd like, it looks like he'd like to stay, but I'm sure it depends on the deal and, and the equipment that he's going to be able to have to under him because he doesn't want to go backwards. I mean, if he wants to have a chance to win a, win a race like he has every year since he's been in Grand Prix racing. Another team that seems to be uncertain in the VDS team, you can see the, the issues with that. Morbidelli is certainly had his issues last few uh, races, and his qualifying was, was pretty bad down in 24th. Thomas Luthi has definitely not gotten acquainted with the modern or with the MotoGP bike, and I guess there's probably talk him, obviously, going back to Moto2 where he uh, spent uh, most of his career. And so I know that he's probably disappointed with that, but it certainly has not helped them either, just like Danny Petrosa, to have the distractions of the team. Like I said, it is a sport that doesn't allow you to be uncertain. 
and those guys are certainly struggling with that. Top of qualifying, looked like Jorge Lorenzo was right there, but what a battle it was in those last few moments, as is usually the tradition in, in Grand Prix racing, the changes made. But look, Jorge Lorenzo was, was the right, first rider, I believe, in, in the minute 32s and dropped all the way down, barely in the top 10. Mark Marquez was right there, and great qualifying for Cal Crutchlow on the other Honda. Um, and it showed that the Hondas are right there. And certainly they're difficult to, to ride, but what you want is a bike, and it seems like they've gotten a good grip with that with the Honda, is a bike that is, it might be difficult, but it doesn't hold the rider back from being able to find that little bit extra when they need to. Not only in that one fast lap, but also as the race progresses in those mini laps to be able to raise the, the speed when you need to or to be able to maintain it, even though you have to work around it. That forgiveness. Forgiveness is not a lot of times the easy part the bike does, but it's the flexibility that the bike allows you to have to be able to make the adjustments, whether it's the line, throttle, or throttle, just different things. Lean angle, of course, and what we do. Lean angle and, and line adjustments is, is really the critical uh, aspect that a bike needs to be flexible so you can make those adjustments when you need to. And it looks like the, that Mark and Cal had that figured out in qualifying. Valentino Rossi, another great qualifying for him in third position. It looked like that Maverick Vinales was going to be right there. And, and again, he seems to be getting a little bit closer and he seemed to be a little bit happier uh, when the bike has the max amount of grip and the maximum fuel, fuel load, which he has been struggling with, as we've been pointed out over the last few race weekends. Late in the race, he seems to be right there. And it certainly looked like he had that figured out. And it certainly, you could see that in the race. Now, at, you had Renz on the Suzuki and Anoni, and those are the two riders that I think is very interesting. Um, the Suzuki seems to be stronger. They had a brand new engine that they talked about, and they seem to have the electronics working better, and so the combination of a little better performance with the engine, electronics, getting that figured out, it certainly paid off. Johan Zarco, another rider that has certainly struggled since he had his crash at the French Grand Prix. We talked about that last race. You wonder if he's watching the results of Asparga and Bradley Smith on the KTM. They were almost two seconds a lap slower than Mark and Crutchlow and, and Valentino Rossi at the top of the grid. That's a lot, you know. And you know they're pushing, especially... Uh, pole on, on the on the KTM and Al, and Bradley Smith too, but it seems like that that they're not really moving forward. That the other teams, uh, the Honda, the the Ducati, and the Suzuki specifically, the Yamaha is holding their own. Maybe they're getting a little bit better, but the KTM certainly is struggling. Even the Priya seems to be performing better at this point. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. I had an interesting conversation this week with someone um, here in London, and it was it was a mover, and we were talking about that he loved MotoGP, and he told me why. Is the excitement, the excitement of the passes, the excitement that you can see the riders just struggling. You can see in the race with Mark Marquez and and push back, and then he was able to fight back through the through the grid, and he compared that with F1. And of course, the reality is, is that it is one of the greatest things that we have over any other motorsports is that excitement that you can see with the riders, especially when you have a battle like we did on Sunday in that race. Seven riders going at it every single lap, that many passes, and just pushing back. And what is the difference between the riders? Well, one is Mark Marquez. Mark's ability to be able to not only fight back, but fight back and, and not make the same mistake again. You know, that is a clarity. That's a being able to see exactly what's happening, be able to think on the spot. And all the top riders can do that, absolutely. But I think that is one of the things that separates Mark. And then his ability to execute. You know, I've talked about his ability to be able to get the bike into the corner as he's leaning in over the grip level, and then, be, and then being able to time that, 
that grip level will catch up when it gets to maximum lean angle and then being able to use both tires initially the rear it breaks traction you know be able to slide to get the bike to change direction and then they hook up at the same time and drive forward as I pointed out before it's one of the reasons why he crashes so much in practice is he's doing that doing that until he the front pushes and pushes he's able to save it we see him saving it in the race he did that on Sunday his trust in that and his belief in that of being able to do it is part of the reason why he can do it and the, the fact that he can anticipate it happening he feels it happening basically before that is one of the things that allow him to be able to do that so well. Alex Renz was the other rider that I think did a great job of that on, on Sunday. And you can see his confidence of being able to, to fight back. Not just fight back with aggression, but fight back with a plan and being able to execute the next move. To learn from why the rider was able to get under you and maybe push you wide and next time protect that not only protect it but be able to capitalize on it that's the thinking part that the great riders and really good riders are able to do it's one reason why they don't fade back as as some riders do um, they are able to fight back it's why Valentino Rossi is able to to hold his position and just kind of monitor and then it's a it's a racecraft and a race smart, smart that is just great to see. So when you watch the race, it's not just the aggression that you want to look for, but you're looking for what did they learn from it. You try to pick that out. It would definitely make the, the racing even more exciting to watch, as we saw on Sunday. You know, Mark, you know, one of the things that he's able to do and realizes is, is that it's just not enough to protect his points lead and and so you saw that and his aggression was, was paid off and worked very well. Dovey, I thought, rode a great race also coming up through the pack. It's unfortunate, and Valentino pointed out, it's unfortunate that him and Val had their little incident that certainly cost them more than likely second and third place. But Alex Renz and Maverick Vinales were able to capitalize on that. Obviously, the rider who hung on throughout that whole thing was the two riders, actually. It was Crutchlow and Zarco, and great for Johan. Then, and you could see that afterwards, is that he wasn't too disappointed because he felt like he was back in the hunt. I think Cal hung on, you know, and, and we'll see what happens as, as the uh, race is gone. But he did a good job. But Jorge Lorenzo, certainly the most disappointed for him, is that he was up there leading the race and he fought back, I thought, very well. But he obviously had some grip issues and, and got pushed back and wasn't able to... to to kind of fire back and, and move back through the pack. Those races, I have to say, are, are, again, so exciting because I look at not only the riders and the end result, but the, how they went about it. And it's just a nice chess match. Again, it's what that gentleman, that young man, that told me this week how much he liked the sport and what the difference was. That's something that he could see too. And so I think that is, is really something very cool to be a part of. Now, we're going on to, to Saxarine, completely different circuit from the last three that we've seen. It's, it's tighter. I've ridden there uh, a few weeks ago at a classic event on, on a, a super bike, and I've ridden a 500 there, and I've ridden a 250 there, and it's amazing how tight that, that first part of the track is. It's just about building momentum. Uh, you have to be very precise, and, and certainly it's a big job to be able to to get the job done there on a tight circuit like Saxarine. But it should make for some very close racing. And if we have anything like we, a race like we had at the Dutch Grand Prix, that's going to be something special. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too.